hi, hello, I'm doing something. And I'm like, you know what? I should record myself doing this because other people probably want to know. So I am making some samples of In Too Deep. This is the end of the, this is the end of the bottle that I have. And you can do a couple of things when you're making samples, when you get to the end of the bottle, you can keep it for yourself. That's a thing. Um, you can you can cut it off and keep it for yourself and like scoop it out of there. But I actually I'm still waiting right now for my big shipment, my big order, and I need to make samples of this hair mask. So rather than keeping it for myself, I am going to I'm going to make some samples out of it. I have a box of tissues that I always like kind of keep handy when I make these because, when I make any kind of samples, because there's always like something I need to wipe off and I can't find it. I have tissue paper beside me. That could work. Gosh. Oh, there we go. Found tissue box. Okay, because it's handy just to like kind of do a little bit of cleanup. So what I'm gonna use is, this is a, I think it's a 30 milliliter syringe. Yeah, 30 milliliter syringe. I get these in a box of like 50 or 100. I will make sure that I put the links for the stuff that I'm using in the description. Um, I use these single use. You certainly can clean them out. I just find the product like stays around like the gasket. You're going to want to start with clean hands, of course. Start with clean hands. You can glove up to do this, um, but clean hands are also good um, to start with. So I'm getting scissors. Scissors, and I'm going to just lop off the top of this. I like to take it and um, get it all down in the tube before I cut it off. So here we go. Cut off the top of the tube and you're probably gonna be shocked by how much stuff is in here. Oh, well, this one isn't as bad as like hand creams sometimes. So tissues are handy for wiping off your tools, wash in between as well. Um, but just the top of the tube, well, the, you know, my lights are too bright, you can't see. Um, but I will then take either a um, popsicle stick or this is a, just a disposable knife. I got these when a craft store was going out of business. So I use them for sample making. So I just scrape it out of there and then load it into the tube. Um, every little bit helps because you know, as it's a sample, you don't need to give them an absolute ton of it. So there's out of the top of my tube. This one may not be as much stuff as like some other things. Oh, there's a good amount down there. So yeah, I just, I get it in there whatever way I can. Um, this diameter of tube, a popsicle stick might be a better tool. But yeah. Load it in the top. This is exciting to watch, right? There's not going to be a ton of samples to made in this, but that's okay. I really actually only need one. And as for which heat seals to use, you can use any of them. There are some available in the por portal that you can use your perks on. Um, I like Mylar ones that I often will get off of Amazon. I know a lot of our friends really like the craft ones like the brown paper ones because they um they can hold them open a little bit easier um so there are just any number of ways to go about this gosh this smells so good if you haven't smelled the hair mask you really need to i just love what it does um my hair this morning i know it looks like it's wet on the video it's not i just put in like some refresher stuff on my hair so um it is slightly damp right now but it is so soft it is very shiny, which is tough to do. I have processed hair. Um, I dye away. I don't do it. My girl Mikey does. She's amazing. Um, I dye away my grays and then we put in some blonde um, so that it hides the grays as they come in. Yeah, so that's pretty much, that's the best we're going to do with this. I'm going to pitch that and I wipe off the top of my syringe. And then here's a little tip for you. When I am about to put this, uh, to make the sample actually with it, I will put it down into my, 
bag, my Mylar bag or my craft bag or whatever it is. So I buy the syringes with what's called the, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Probably I'm not a medical person. Allure lock, L-E-U-R, L-U-E-R, something like that. Allure lock. And then I buy the ones with these little tips. The reason is I can use this tip. Should I use a fancy um, like tube? Um, to put my sample in, but also it helps me to get down into the thing because otherwise I'd have to like shove the syringe down in it. But I like this, I like the um, tip of it because it lets me get down in there. Here's a pro tip for you. When you are about to put the plunger back into your sampling device, I put it in a packet to do it because anything that squirts out will wind up in your packet or rather than somewhere else. So it can be a little scary to start out and I like I can feel exactly how much is going in there so that's a pretty good sample it's about I don't know um almost a third to a half of the um of the packet put a little more in there um because remember it's a sample they don't have to be able to use you know a whole bunch of it um and then I always be very careful with this tip when I am in between sometimes there can be a little bit of um, leakage of the product but I just kind of keep a tissue handy so I can wipe it up and then I just go on to the next one so then I'll just fill these probably can get at least two more samples out so then I'll heat seal them. There are any number of heat sealers you can use. I have a giant one. I keep saying I'm gonna get a smaller one and I have it in my Amazon cart and then other things take precedence to buying another heat sealer. Um, you can also use your very own flat iron if you already have one at home. I will tell you to wrap that puppy in foil though because you don't wanna wind up with like product baked onto the flat iron that you use for your hair. So, okay, this is probably the last one. So that's five out of like, a small amount in the tube that you know might have gotten discarded. So this is a this sample is a little small, but it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, there's four um, samples. I take my my needle out when I put it. It's a blunt needle, so it's not going to hurt someone. But I take it out when I dispose of it, and then like wrap it so that way it doesn't hit anybody. Um, it wouldn't wouldn't puncture that, but I don't want that to happen. So then I take my sample and here is my heaty press. Um, and I just put it down in there and it's a guessing game. You know, you put it in there, you seal it, you see what it looks like, see if it um, made a good seal. And like any heat seals, the longer you use them, like the longer in time period for the, the period that you are using them, the hotter it's going to get. So what I like to do is when I seal is I squish the product back up to sort of test my seal that's on there. And this seal is working quite well. So that looks good. I'll just seal the other four that I have. I test a couple of times along the way and then sometimes I'll go back in and I will seal it again. I find this calming. I don't know why. Um, sometimes I'll put on a Netflix show or something while I do my samples. Um, and when I do samples, like my gosh, like I do samples, like I truck right along and keep doing them. Um, I will usually start out, like if I have a full bottle that I'm sampling with, um, I'm pretty good at like aiming my tube down into the heat seal pack. And then once I get to the end, I do my little cutoff trick um, to get the last bits out of it. So there we go. We are, I think we're heat sealed. I like the heat seal bags because I can mail these in an envelope because they lay flat and I can mail them with a non-machinable stamp. I don't think that's leaking. I think that's a little product on the top. With the needle too, what I like is that I don't wind up with a lot of like the product at the top if you just do it by hand. Um, and I know some people that they will do all of their samples through the syringe because they like that better. So there we go. Um, I am going to now show you how I put a label on these guys. Okay, so for labeling, there's any number of ways that you can do it. I recently just purchased labels from onlinelabels.com. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, onlinelabels.com. And with it, they get your own um, design software 
called Maestro. You can also use Avery labels. You can purchase labels at your local Walmart or Target or wherever it may be um, and design them in Microsoft Word or any number of ways. This is just how I'm doing it now. And I wanted to show you um, what this looks like. It's a very easy program to learn. And I print it out and I will show you what this looks like. It just printed out. These are, mm, gosh, with my background, it's washing it out. So these are my labels. I have a whole sheet of them. Um, these, the size of them is one and three quarters inches by one and a quarter inch. I bought these ones because they fit on the back side of here. I don't wanna cover up the posh side, but I want them to know what the product is and also who I am. So, oh, come on. There we go. It has the product, it has product information, how to use it, and also my name and my website on there. And I wanted like a one sort of stop shop to do that. So that is me using up the last of a tube to make up some samples. So that could have been product that either maybe I cut off the top and used it myself, um, but I was able to get five samples so I can let five people see the joy that is in too deep. So hopefully this helps you. Bye.